Hi everyone, here is question number two from the AP Calculus AB exam in 2024. And make sure to check in the description below where I provide a link to College Board where you can see this FRQ and the other FRQs from 2024. So in number two, it says a particle moves along the x-axis so that its velocity at time t greater than or equal to zero is given by this velocity equation. And because this was question number two on the FRQ, you were able to use your graphing calculator. So part A says there is one time t in the interval from zero to two when the particle is at rest or not moving, and we need to find that time. And then we'll move on to the second part. So the first thing to take note of is a particle is at rest when velocity is zero. So what I did is I went to the graphing calculator and I plugged in the velocity equation into y1. And then what you'll wanna do is you'll wanna change your window to only go from zero to two um, because it says that in part A. And so, and then also actually in Y2, I'm going to go ahead and put in a zero because I, I like to find where those intersect. So you can see that the blue equation is the velocity equation, and I want to calculate this intersection point right here to find when the particle is at rest or a velocity of zero. So let's go ahead and press the intersection, and you can see that occurs at a time value of 1.425 or 1.426. So here we would say um, T sub R is again that 1.426 value. And then again, um, that occurs when V of T is equal to zero at that time value. And then it says for time values between zero and this value we just found of 1.426, is the particle moving right or to the left and give a reason for your answer. And if we go back to the graph, you can see that the blue graph lies above the x-axis or velocity is positive between zero and that time value we just found. And because velocity is positive, that means this particle is moving right. So my reasoning would be for time values between zero and 1.426, the particle is moving right because V of T is greater than zero. Let's take a look at part B. In part B, we are asked to find the acceleration of the particle at t equals 1.5 and show the setup for your calculations. So for this part, we need to recall that acceleration at 1.5 is really the derivative of velocity at 1.5. And again, you can use your calculator for this one. And remember, I have typed in velocity into y1. So when I head back here to the main screen, and I want to find the derivative of, I can just go straight to y1 and find that derivative at 1.5. And okay, so something interesting happens on this one because we get negative point and then there's a whole bunch of nines. And so this actually, I had like an alert go off in my head thinking, okay, do I write negative 0 0.999, but that's awfully close to negative one. So what answer should I put for this one? So what I did is I, I was unsure. So I thought to myself, you know what, let me go ahead and find um, the derivative of velocity or acceleration by hand. And the derivative of a natural log is one over t squared minus four t plus five. And then we have to multiply by the chain rule, so multiply by the derivative of the inside and then subtract 0 0.2. Now when I did that and plugged in 1.5, I did see that it was exactly negative one. So you need to be careful there based on what the calculator gives you and what the number actually should be. So I'm gonna go with negative one on that one. And then for the second part, it says, is the speed of the particle increasing or decreasing at time t equals 1.5 and explain your reasoning. To know if a particle uh, speed is increasing or decreasing, you have to look at the sign of both velocity and acceleration. Now we already found the sign of acceleration was negative because it was a negative one. So now we need to find velocity of 1.5 and specifically not really what the value is, but just whether it is positive or negative is really what matters. So I'm gonna go ahead and again, use the idea that my function is already typed into y1 and then let's evaluate that at 1.5 and we see we get a negative value. So again, what's important is that um, 
it's whether it's positive or negative. So as we can see, acceleration and velocity are both negative at a time of 1.5. And because they have the same sign, that means our particle, uh, the speed of the particle will be increasing. So I would write the speed of the particle is increasing at t equals 1.5 because a of t and v of t are both negative at t equals 1.5. All right, moving on to part C. The position of the particle at time t is shown by x of t, and its position at time 1, x of 1, is negative 3. Find the position of the particle at t equals 4 and show the setup. So we want to find the position of the particle at 4. We would need to first think about the position at 1 and then add on the change in position from 1 to 4 of v of t dt. And since v of t is defined, I'll go ahead and just write that in my work. So there is the setup. And so x of 1 is going to be negative 3. And so in your calculator, you can do negative 3 plus the integral from 1 to 4 of, and then we can go ahead and plug in that velocity equation. And when you do that in your calculator, it comes out to be negative 2.803. And so that would be the position of the particle at a time of 4. And then lastly, part D says to find the total distance traveled by the particle over the interval from 1 to 4 and show the setup for your calculations. And the main thing to remember here is if I just do the integral of velocity, that gives me displacement. But since this question is asking about the total distance, you would need to set up the integral from 1 to 4 of the absolute value of velocity. That way you get the total distance. And when you do that in your calculator, you end up getting a total distance of 0 0.958. And that's it. That's question number two of the AP Calculus AB exam uh, FRQ from 2024. So thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.